Hello, I am Epana Black, and along with my cohorts, Shanna Keel and Robin White, we wrote a paper entitled Using a Geographical Information Systems to Identify Obesity Risk Factors. This was completed at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. We are current PhD nursing urban sustainability health track students. And in this track, it allows nurses to conduct sustainable based research that positively impacts not only the health of today's citizens, but tomorrow as well. In this track, we were able to take a GIS course in which we decided to look at obesity risk factors in Dallas, Texas. The reality is that obesity is a rising healthcare epidemic that contributes to many financial and long-term health complications. The aim of our paper was to discuss obesity and its detrimental effects on the health of the population while focusing on the built environment of Dallas, Texas. Um, we chose Dallas, Texas because it was a more central location and it had um, some issues with obesity and we will show you that in the future slides. This slide gives some statistical data as well as background information on the childhood obesity epidemic. It also discusses the financial implications of this epidemic. My name is Robin White and I am going to discuss how obesity has become an urban health problem in the United States. As you can see from the current slide, obesity is a huge problem in the United States today. The obesity trend challenges healthcare providers and the public health system to develop broader interventions focused at both individual and community and should include the built environment. Because research has shown that children and adults are at greater risk for obesity and its complications if they come from a lower socioeconomic group, have lower educational attainment, and are from a minority, race, or ethnicity, Geographic Information Systems, or GIS mapping, can represent these disparities visually. In addition, recent advances in GIS and spatial analytic tools have expanded opportunities to explore disease risk and health problems, and also to include the, the built environment. Healthcare providers are treating an increasing number of overweight and obese adults, and being overweight or obese contributes to multiple chronic illnesses, multifaceted and expensive healthcare costs, and ultimately premature death. The obesity epidemic affects all age groups, children through adults, and contributes to diagnoses of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, weight-related sleep disorders, as well as orthopedic problems. Studies show a high correlation between increasing childhood overweight and obesity rates, leading to increasing adult overweight and obesity rates in the United States. The adverse effects of overweight and obesity on children's health persist into adulthood, leading to a greater risk of lifelong weight-related disease. It is estimated that $130 billion are spent in the United States annually on obesity and its complications, with direct medical cost attributable to overweight and obesity, accounting for approximately 9% of all U.S. health care expenses. The obesity epidemic has recently received national recognition with HBO as well as other experts in the area of obesity um, creating the weight of the nation. It's a series. I put the link here to the website and in this you can watch the films, you can learn about um, the obesity epidemic in more detail and there are uh, ways that we can take action as well as it tells you what's in progress in taking action to defeat this obesity epidemic. A major contributing factor to the development of obesity as an obesogenic environment is the built environment. There are many aspects of the built environment that are contributing factors to obesity, such as socioeconomic deprivation, crime and safety concerns, poor housing, and inadequate street lighting. Further, a lack of sidewalks, parks and playgrounds, recreational facilities, adequate public transportation and local grocery stores carrying healthy foods are additional elements of the built environment. 
Just a quick picture of Dallas to focus of our paper. In reviewing some statistics, Dallas, Texas was in the forefront of the cities with children that are overweight. It was also considered one of the top 10 nationwide overweight cities in the United States. Um, and here are some more statistical data. So there is definitely an obesity problem in Dallas, and so that's one of the main reasons why we picked it. We were also able to find shape files in order to look at using GIS. In order to study the problem of obesity, we must analyze the epidemiologic design. The epidemiologic triangle includes three aspects when looking at any disease process, environment, agent, and host. The environment includes aspects such as the degree of social support or neighborhood crime rates. Further, the built environment may include access to safe recreation, access to healthy food options, access to health care options, and safe paths for walking and biking. Obesity's causative agent is multifactorial and includes excess caloric intake and availability of high-fat food options, along with decreased physical activity. Host characteristics influencing obesity include age, development level, and lifestyle choices. Because GIS will be used in this presentation, the built environment as it relates to adult and childhood obesity in Dallas, Texas will be emphasized. Here's a map that was created in GIS showing Dallas and as it's located in Texas with the 2003 population because that's what we had access to as far as shape files. This map was directly taken from the CDC based off of 2010 and if you notice we chose Dallas because Texas is one of the states that has the highest prevalence of obesity as you can see in the color coding here. This map utilizes Eric Fisher's method of color coding. Each dot represents 25 individuals. Um, the red dot represents the white race, the blue represents the black race, the green represents the Asian race, and the orange represents the Hispanic race. Looking at our map, the Hispanic population represented in orange is predominantly central in Dallas, with some in the northern region of Dallas and some in the south to southwest region of Dallas. The black population predominantly resides in the southern portion of Dallas, and the white population is evenly spread throughout Dallas, except in the southern region of Dallas, where the white population is scant. This was actually three maps done in GIS, just put on one PowerPoint slide. Um, the one to the upper left shows middle and high schools in Dallas region. The one to the upper right shows elementary schools. And the one to the lower right shows higher education. Now, if you look at the map that reveals higher education, um, there is limited access to higher education in the southern region of Dallas. The elementary schools pretty, seem pretty spread out, so it doesn't reveal very much. And the middle schools and high schools, maybe there's a little bit of decrease in the southern region. We also were looking at the schools uh, to identify what the poverty level could be in the various regions. There is a website we use called schooldigger.com. And in that website, we were able to pull up the public schools in the Dallas region and identify the proportion of students they get free and reduced lunch. Um, and a good chunk of the students that got free and reduced lunch were located in the southern region of Dallas. Um, there has been some links to lower socioeconomic status and obesity uh, rates being increased. And so that's why we were uh, looking at that. This map was created in GIS and it revealed access to recreation such as parks, athletic stadiums, and fitness centers. It also included grocery stores, super centers like Costco and Sam's Club locations as well. Um, the grocery stores and super centers were it depicted with a circle and it was red with a black dot. Recreation selection was in purple and the park selections is in green. If you look, there is limited access to parks in the southern region of Dallas as well as recreation and any major uh, grocery stores or super centers. This is really important because lack of access to healthy food and recreational opportunities or even access to parks can increase the risk of obesity. This map was created by Berg and Murdoch. We put this in just as a comparable to what we had found in our previous slide. If you look at this, this is the number of chain grocery stores within one mile for Dallas County Census Block Group and red indicates that there are zero. And so if you see that the southern region is predominantly red, indicating that there are none in that area, as we had found as well. And this is a problem because large 
grocery stores near residents is important because many of the smaller convenience stores do not offer fresh produce and healthy food and drinks. The final health disparity that we looked at was access to hospitals. It is clear that obesity can lead to many health complications that will require medical attention. Therefore, we wanted to visualize the locations of hospital in the Dallas area on a map. And if you can see, there's a decreased access to hospitals in the southern region of Dallas. Here's just a summary of what the maps revealed. So what does all of this mean? Basically, findings from this presentation exploring the built environment and obesity in Dallas, Texas can use GIS systems in various practice settings. Direct care providers, public health personnel, and nurse scientists may utilize these study findings. Despite availability, GIS use in health settings remains underutilized with research indicating the best use of GIS is in a multidisciplinary setting. Multidisciplinary teams can determine what specific neighborhoods are at an increased risk for obesity, and direct care providers may include health teaching and interventions for adults and children in vulnerable areas and initiate early interventions for these at-risk individuals. Additionally, the GIS maps clearly indicate that Southern Dallas lacks access to health care facilities. Health care providers may use this information to provide accessible health care such as mobile care clinics. Public health personnel and nurse scientists may use study findings to develop state-based policies, programs, and facilities aimed at combating obesity. Further, educational or media campaigns may use data to locate at-risk areas where interventions should be focused. GIS analysis is instrumental in allowing individual census tracts, cities, counties, and states to determine how they are performing on leading health indicators such as overweight and obesity. This information is crucial for state-based surveillance systems such as the CDC Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System for adults and the National Survey of Children's Health for Children. Further, GIS data is helpful for the development and implementation of programs to combat the obesity epidemic. GIS mapping can depict health disparities existing between states as well as document changes that occur in obesity prevalence as progress is achieved. GIS documentation of geographic disparities for, for risk factors related to obesity should be an essential component of state and national surveillance systems for the purpose of tracking progress and meeting the overall objective of reducing overweight and obesity rates in children and adult populations in the United States. In summary, GIS use in research has increased in the past 20 years. Study investigators, particularly in the field of epidemiology, healthcare, and public health, utilize GIS in describing health-related challenges, identifying contributing factors, and supporting decision and policy making. The utilization of GIS enhances research studies, and GIS is considered to be an increasingly substantial tool in collecting, analyzing, and distributing study results. GIS data can show prevalence rates over time, indicating whether interventions have been effective, as well as providing a more comprehensive examination of the built environment to include demographics such as race and income. GIS can be instrumental in making positive changes in the built environment to combat obesity in an area such as Dallas, Texas.